Yeah, that's my pastor, but he's going to pay for that one. <laughs> I, I can't be as good as he say I am because I don't see nobody running the aisles yet. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise How are we doing tonight? This morning, I should say. Oh, well, I work third shift, so y'all got to forgive me. I, I'm used to the night shift. I normally sleep about this time. Yeah, I'm normally sleep about this time until about 2 to get the kids, so y'all got to forgive me. But I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Everybody, I see all these people on, on, on a Sunday morning. We should be excited. We came to hear the word. Well, I came to hear the word. I hope everybody else came to hear the word, too, because that's, that's the point. You know, we get, we get the devotion and we get, you know, we get breakfast and we get the, the feet stomping, but we get to hear the word, the word of the Lord. So let us, without any further ado, in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, and I'll read four verses out of Matthew 16, starting with verse 24. And in Luke, if you want to put your finger there, 18, chapter 18, verse 18, 18 through 25. If I can get an amen when we get a couple people there. Amen. 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 Matthew 16, 24 reads as follow. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my name's sake shall find it. For what? Is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mm -hmm. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with the angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. In the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 18, it says this And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit, inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these, these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, so all thou, thou hast, distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, and follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of, of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And I would like to speak from the text in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We can look at denying ourselves from three standpoints is where I want to take it to. I want to take it to the, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. You know, I like to go to the gym. Y'all know how fit I am. <laughs> I like to go to the gym and I like to do a little working out, a little calisthenics, you know, a little push-ups and, and sit-ups and, and crunches and, and things of that nature. I'm trying to, I'm trying to cut my, my weight down, you know. I'm, I'm trying to come down a little bit. If y'all can't tell, I've been cutting some soup, soup size. I'm sure my wife, could, you know, can tell you all about that. But, but, but I've been trying to come down. I, I've been trying to deny myself. But the, the, the gym isn't the hard part. The hard part is eating. It's the eating. I just can't. Yeah. Food is so good. It's just so yummy. I, I just don't know sometimes. I know Pastor like his bacon, but I like my bacon too. And he don't want to share his. I go buy some. But, but you know, I just, that's the hard part for me. It is the eating. The gym, I can go and I can put in the work on the stair stepper and I can get 1,500 steps and I can go and do a few laps or, or, or something like that. I don't mind doing the pull-ups. Those are hard too, but it's the eating. It's the denying myself. Uh, I know Minister Ashley got up Tuesday and was talking about temptation and, and she mentioned how them cupcakes, all oh, them cupcakes. Oh. Woo, them cupcakes. Hey, them cupcakes will get me too. I like cupcakes. You're not the only one. 
It's them cupcakes. You got to let them cupcakes go. I got to put them cupcakes down and, and I got to deny this flesh something if I want to deny it myself so that I can get fed. My in-laws uh, dogged me out one time because they took me to, well, my brother-in-law took me, well, he wasn't my brother-in-law at that time, but he took me to a bocce grill. And I had dinner with his parents and, you know, we went out and everybody's just packing on the food and, you know, it's, it's a buffet. If y'all know who bocce is, it's a buffet. And we go and, you know, I get me a nice plate. Now, I got a nice amount of food on there, you know. I'm, I'm eating and everybody just scarfing it down. And I'm, you know, I, I ate one plate and I'm like, I'm done. They're like, you're done. How are you done? It's a buffet. I'm like, I'm, I'm full. <laughs> I can't be full, but, you yeah, know, they, they, they like to dog me out because, you know, that one plate just, for them, it just wasn't enough. But, you, you know, to overeat, I, I had to, you know, deny myself. I understood that that's all I needed. That's all I needed to get full. That was, that was enough for me. How about when we fast? Oh, man. Woo, I know the pastor phone probably be blowing up. People, is it a sin to break a fast? I know I started my fast, but if I break my fast, is it a sin to break my fast? Because we want to eat. Man, you deny that flesh to fast. It's the hardest. You're sweating and just pending, walking around the house like you've been in the desert for 10 years. Man, tell me about it. I know I'll be boo-hooing. I ain't called him or text him, but I'll be boo-hooing about that fast. But the fast is good for us. We got to deny that flesh, that food. It wants to eat. It wants to eat. Man, I'm thinking now what I'm going to eat after church. Let me get back to the message. Us as people, it is our nature to, to be defiant. It is our nature to not want to co comply to rules and regulations. I had a friend that was in the military and he was going through basic training and for him, before he even got into it, he, he went to sign the papers and they, what they told him was at, right at, as soon as he got done signing the papers, they said, well, your soul is mine now and walked out. Now what that drill sergeant is going to do, he's going to come in and he's going to spit in your face and he's going to tell you when to get up and when you can tie your shoes and, and, and how far to have your feet apart and, and, and how many push-ups you're going to do. And you're going to have to deny yourself if you want to follow with the military's program because that's how they do things. Most people don't quit probably because it's the fact of the, the, the jogging, the getting up late, only having four hours of sleep. It's the fact that I got to sit there and I got to listen to somebody bark orders in my face and I got to bring my, myself under control because I know he's in charge. The sergeant's in charge. It's his show. It ain't my show no more. So I got to de deny myself the, 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 the want to bark back, the, the want to tell him how it really is, the, 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 to tell him, no, this is how I'm going to do it because I, I didn't listen to my dad. So you think I'm going to listen to you? My dad didn't tell me what to do. I, I, we had fisticuff in the street if he did. Yeah. Dad better not tell me what to do. But when we come to God in, in the spiritual sense, we have, to, we have to deny ourselves. We have to turn from what it's called. We have to repent from dead works. You know, dead works is sin. It's religious practices that do not bring reconciliation to God. It's seeing things how we always see things, operating under the flesh. Those are dead works. Those are things that we have to lay down. If we plan to, to, to come to God, we have to put those things aside. In the book of Proverbs 23, 26, he says this. The writer says, my son, give me thine heart and let thy eyes observe my ways. I, I, I know this is talking about the, the, the son is obviously the church, but in application, you can take this to somebody that doesn't know God. If you'll just allow God to come in and, and have his way with you, he'll do something to your mind. He'll, he'll allow you. If you just to, just stop thinking how you always thought about things and, and give him your heart, he'll take control. The Bible says in, in, in Matthew 4, 17, the, the very first thing that Jesus preached when he got done being tempted by the devil before he even called any of his disciples, what he said, it says, from this time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's his first message before he had any disciples, before he called the first ones, the first message he had was repent, turn from how you see things, allow me to take control. He said, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. In Matthew 16, 24, he goes to say this. 
Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. He says, if any man, it don't matter what you look like. It don't matter what your hairstyle is. It don't matter your skin color. God ain't got black and white churches. Man got black and white churches. God's got one church. He said, if any man deny himself, just take up your cross and follow me. I can give you something. Don't follow a man that, that, that sounds good. Don't, don't follow a man that, that looks good. Follow the man that's following Christ. The apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, he said, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am followers of Christ. As also am I of Christ. Don't follow the man that, that, that's telling you prosperity, that's going to tell you how to get your bank account rich. But I tell you, if you go to work and you be a good steward over what God gave you, you'll have a little money in the bank. He says, for who, who, whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my name's sake shall find it. I, I said this a couple weeks ago, and everybody was looking at me like, like I was crazy. For, so, for whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my name's sake shall find it. Give it up. Give it to me. Allow me to, to take that the way you used to live, that, that fleshly lifestyle, and allow me to take control of you. I can make you a new creature. I can make you without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, without any such thing. I can make you something new. I can put a a mind that was in in me and I can put it in you. That's what God can do for us if we would allow him to take control. He'll make you clean. He'll make you righteous. That's what he does. But you have to deny yourself. You have to be able to put those things aside the way I always say things ain't the right way. And not always the right way. He said, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? God said in Psalms 50 verse 10, he says, for every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. Everything is mine. He, he, he's relating the, the, the world to your soul, and he's he's ma- making it seem like you might might might, might see this backwards. But he said, the whole world, there's your soul, and here's the whole world right here. What's worth it? That whole world that I have right here is not worth your soul. He's comparing the whole world to your soul right here. God is willing to leave the ninety nine righteous to save the one sheep. Are you the one sheep tonight? He's willing to leave the ones that are already righteous to go seek the one that hasn't been saved for that one sinner that is willing to repent and straighten his life up and turn his life around. He's willing to do that, but you have to take down off what you always believe, the way you always view things. Everybody's got a certain way they view things, but doesn't make it right. And even dealing with, with when I go to witness and I deal with certain people, I always try to take in consideration of how they view things. Because... I, I once viewed things a different way before I got saved. I didn't always see things for what they were. I always had an idea about what this is. And what I did was I took what I, I just had to stand. I'm going to stand on that regardless of what you say. I had no knowledge of it. But because I didn't want to take down about how I feel, I didn't want to deny myself. I held it regardless if they was right or wrong. People think that they got a reason to think like they do. They're not saved. They don't know God. They don't know his ways. So why they think what they think, they think they're right. They have a right to. What is it profit a man to gain the whole world but, but lose his soul? There's nothing that, 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 that you can have in this life that is worth your soul. Everything. It doesn't matter what you have. Count, count it up. Count up all the money you've ever had. It's not worth your soul. It's not worth it. No woman's worth your soul. No, no man. There, there's no money. There's no liquor. There's no alcohol. There's no uh, r- religious beliefs or, or these family traditions that I've always had that can, can, can get in the way of me getting saved. You got to come down off how you always felt what daddy said this and, and, my, and mama always thought that. And, and that's just, well, mama said, my mama didn't told me. Man, my mama told me I don't care what you say. But, but, but this is the type of thing that we deal with because, because, because our family ha- has a big stronghold on us. Mama raised you. 
Mama made sure you had food. Daddy went out and worked to make sure y'all had what y'all had to eat. So why am I not going to listen? Why would I listen to you when my parents always told me this? These are things that we face. These are things that you're going to come encounter with. But you have to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow Jesus. He's the one that can, can save your soul. It doesn't matter what mama thinks no more. It doesn't matter what daddy, my, my, my Uncle Tim, and, and little Jim Bob and Jimbo think anymore. It's about Jesus. Deny yourself. Pick up his cross. No, your cross and follow me because Jesus already buried the cross. Now it's your turn to suffer a little bit. Now you got to pick your cross up and follow me. In Luke 18, 18, it says, a certain ruler asked him, saying, good master, what shall I do to eternal, e e e inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Notice Jesus never said he wasn't God. He, he wants the man to understand that, listen, you, you're calling me good, but you need to understand, the one that you're calling good is God. Why callest thou me good? None is good save one. That's God. He, he's presenting it in a way that, that, that the man is really not understanding. I'm pretty sure he's not, he's not understanding. He's just gonna, gonna sit there, he's, but he's gonna listen because he wants to be saved. He came to the good master. There's a lot of masters, but he came to the good master. Jesus once said, he said, I am the good shepherd. In verse 20, he says, thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, all oh, these have I kept from my youth up. He had done all these things from his youth up, but when Jesus came to turn around and say, you got to sell all you have, you got to give up that money that you're putting your trust in. Now, oh, I don't know if I can do that, Lord. Good. Now he's probably bad master. He's probably not good master no more. I got to give up my money. I can't do that. The Bible doesn't say how long it took this man to acquire his wealth. It doesn't say anything like that. But what it does say is when he heard these things, he walked away sorrowful. What is it in your life that's allowing you to, to not come to God, that's not allowing you to lay down your life, pick up your cross, and follow Jesus? All right, all right. Because there's got to be something. It may not be money. It might be a woman. It might be liquor. It might just be because I don't want to get saved yet because I'm too young. I'm too young to get saved. I, I got to wait till I'm 40 or 50, but the rapture might happen while we're in church right now. Oh, now, now I'm getting, now I'm cutting, I'm getting close to home now. What happens if the rapture takes place right now and you see people, boom, they're gone. That's what's going to happen so fast, you ain't going to see them, boom. They're going to be out of here. <laughs> Things going to go back to dust. You ain't going to see no clothes. You ain't got to worry about that. What are you going to do then? There's things in our life that we have to give up. We have to deny certain things. There is something that everybody that's not saying, there's something they're holding on to. It may be multiple things, but it's probably that, that one thing that I just can't let that go. I just can't do it. I can't let the cigarettes go. I can't let her go. She said she loved me, but we, we ain't got married. We've been together 10 years, and she said maybe next year, and then it's next year, and then it's next year. We put God off for, for, for these things that, that don't matter because he said you could gain the whole world, but what should it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what it says, or, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What can I swap out? There's nothing that you can swap. But yet we don't come to God, yet we don't uh, deny ourselves, yet we don't pick up our cross, and yet we don't follow him. We don't follow him. In verse 22, he says, Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet thou lackest one thing. Sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, and follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. It's not like Jesus is going to leave him broke. He said, why, why was he so sorrowful? Thou shalt have treasure in heaven. You're going to have to give up that money now to wait to get your money then. 
But we want to live a life in sin now. We Sin is fun for yes, a season, but there's coming a time where you, you're going to have to decide what's going to be too late at that point. You better decide today. You might not have time to decide after you have a little fun walling around and sinning. Oh, I decide I want to give up that one thing that was, was always holding me back from picking up my cross. He said, you can have riches in heaven. But we're not seeking a city whose builder and maker is God. We are seeking, uh, I'm seeking Beverly Hills and I'm seeking the, the, the Florida and man, Florida is nice and I'm seeking, uh, Denver. I like the mountains and I like the altitude. It's just something about Denver. We're seeking these things and we, we want to have these things now and I don't want to wait for God to return now. Uh, then I'll, I'll have it now. That's what we're doing. If you deny yourself, what will God do? In Matthew 16, 27, it says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. You will be rewarded. Not just in that, in that life, but this life too. He said to his disciples in Luke 18, 29, he says, And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that have left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come. You're going to get something. It may not be that, that, that a million dollars you've always been wanting to have, but you're going to get something good. You're going to get more manifold now. Quite frankly, me, I'd rather have knowledge. But that's just me. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. I want you to know this, this life being saved, it's not always peaches and cream as they like to make it seem. You're going to go through some things. There are going to be some problems in your life. But what God did say, he said, I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee. Paul said, cast, cast thy, thy cares upon him for he cared for you. What did, what did God tell Isaiah to tell the children of Israel? He said, in, in all their afflictions, he was afflicted. And that applies to the church because the church, uh, by, by the laws that, that God showed to Israel, the church can inherit those being now the firstborn. So now we can see that and say, in all our afflictions, he was afflicted. When we cry, he's right there alongside of us. Will you deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus? Elder Pompey, will you give our altar call?